Hello everyone, welcome back to A Tree You Crochet. So let me just say, I've enjoyed very much making scarves, but I'm so happy to be crocheting something other than a scarf. Ten consecutive scarves is a bit much, even for the most avid crochet scarf maker. <laughs> uh, so that takes us to today's video where I will be making a dish rag. Now I found this pattern online, it's a free pattern, and it's by uh, Willow Yarns. So I just wanted to show you guys, for those of you especially who are new to like reading patterns, um, and you kind of want to learn how to do it, like you want to look up a pattern or buy a book with patterns in it and, and get to crocheting, uh, this video is kind of for you guys, okay? So let's look at this pattern right now. As you see, this first page it just says skill level, easy, okay? And finish size should be 10 inches by 10 inches. The materials you need, willow yarns, farmhouse, cotton, they have their own yarn as you can see. I'm using sugar and cream, it's a cotton yarn as well. And it's calling for a ball A and a ball B, okay? I'm using a US size G6 hook and this is a size 6. I know you guys miss my 7 millimeter but yeah we're gonna actually use <laughs> a 4 millimeter today okay and then a yarn needle it says you need this is the yarn needle the darning weaving tapestry needle as I always call it and they didn't say it they didn't list it but obviously you need some scissors okay um, and it's telling you the gauge so whenever you see where it says gauge that just is telling you after you make four rows four rows should be equivalent to two inches or 2.5 centimeters if you're using the metric system I also forgot to mention because it didn't say it in the pattern but you will need a tape measure or ruler just something to measure in inches and or centimeters okay all right now before we get started I want to show you some of their abbreviations that are used okay I'm not gonna go through all of them but Capital CC in this pattern stands for contrasting color, whereas capital M, capital C stands for main color. Okay, um, PAT stands for pattern, obviously YO is yarn over, and etc. Okay, most of these you probably know, LP is loop or loops. I'm going to be talking you through the pattern anyway, but this is, as I said, just to prepare you for when you're reading patterns, you can look for on whose ever site it is that has put up a pattern, they will oftentimes use many of the same abbreviations, but some will be different, okay? It just depends on the pattern. All right, and then the last thing that I wanna show you before we get started is this, where it says stitch guide, so it's just letting you know R-E-V-S-C, that stands for reverse single crochet, and basically it's just telling you you're working backwards from left to right, okay? And I'll be showing you how to do that. And then below that, there are some pattern notes, and it's just telling you that you should be able to make four dishcloths if you use their two balls of yarn. Okay, let's get started. All right, so moving on to the instructions, you will say it says with MC, remember MC, stands for main color. If you hadn't gone over the abbreviations beforehand, you might not have known that. All right, so with MC chain 41. Now, anytime you need to chain, well, I shouldn't say anytime, but most times when you need to chain, what you need to obviously do beforehand is make a slip knot, okay? And they are assuming, even though this is for you know, this is an easy project, they're assuming that you know that. So even though it doesn't say make a slip knot, make a slip knot. So wrap, twist exchange, wrap, pull this one over that one and off your finger while pulling up, insert your US slash G, okay, crochet hook. I think that's four millimeters. All right, and now we're gonna commence to chaining 41. So yarn over, pull through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirty-nine, forty, 40, and 41. 
Okay, so these are our 41 chains. All right, so now moving on to row one, it says single crochet into the second chain from the hook and in each chain across, okay? So that's the first chain from the hook. This is the second chain, that one right there from the hook. So we're gonna put a single crochet in there. Like that. All right, and you'll notice it also says 40 stitches, okay? So it's telling you how many stitches you should have at the end of this row. All right, and so we're just gonna continue putting single crochets into every chain. So this single crochet is in that second chain from the hook, and then in the next chain, which is there, we're gonna put another single crochet. And then the next one, just insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull through to the front, two loops, yarn over, go through two, one and two. You're gonna learn that this cotton yarn uh, is very prone to splitting, so it'll be good practice for you guys. All right, and then also you will see that in the instructions for row one, it says in, in parentheses that you should have 40 SC. It's telling you should have 40 single crochet at the end of this row. Why 40 if you chained 41? Well, remember, you skipped that, that one chain, that first chain from the hook. So you didn't put a single crochet in it. So that left 40 single crochets, okay? So just continue putting one single crochet in every chain like that. And I will meet you once we get to the last chain. See you there. All right, as you can see, I'm almost done and I've been counting my single crochets as I've been making them. So I left off at 38. The next chain is 39. And in that final chain, I'm putting my 40th single crochet. So I have the appropriate and proper number of single crochets. All right, so that's row one. Now it says to turn, so we'll turn our work. And it says to chain one. A lot of times I like to chain before I turn, but I'm gonna follow the pattern because that's what we are doing. <laughs> so chain one. Okay, and now it says, for row two, in parentheses, single crochet, then put two double crochet in the first stitch, okay? So we chained one. This first stitch right here is technically the last single crochet that we made of the previous row. It's the one that that chain one is coming up out of, okay? So it says first put a single crochet in there. So we chain one. We're going to slice the icing off the top of the cake of that first single crochet like that. We're going to yarn over, pull through, left with two loops, and then we're going to yarn over and go through two. And now in that same stitch, because the single crochet and then the comma 2DC, that's all going in this one stitch, we're going to put two double crochet in that same stitch. So yarn over, enter the same spot, yarn over, pull through to the front, three loops, yarn over, go through two, one, two, yarn over, go through two, one, two. Go back in there, yarn over, and put that second double crochet. Yarn over, go through two, one, two, yarn over, go through two, one, two. So we did the chain one, we put the single crochet and the two double crochet in that first stitch, and now we see an asterisk. Whenever you see an asterisk, that means that what comes after that, that segment, you're going to be repeating at some point. So just keep that in your mind, okay? So now it says skip, that's what SK stands for, skip next two stitches, okay? So this is the next one, okay? And then that's the one thereafter. Those are the next two, one, two, all right? And then, in parentheses, do that single crochet, two double crochet in that next stitch, so this third one. So we skip the one, we skip the two, the second stitch, and in this third one, we're going to do what we did here, there. So we're going to put the single crochet in there first, slice in the icing, yarn over, pull through to the front, like that, and then yarn over, go through two. 
And now we're going to go back into that same place and put two double crochets. So that's why I yarned over, enter the same place, yarn over three loops, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Another one, yarn over, re enter that same stitch, three loops, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Okay? And that's what we have. Now, you see the semicolon and it says repeat from the asterisk across. So you're going to keep doing that. Remember that from the asterisk told us to skip the next two stitches. So skip that one, skip that one. And in this third one, we're going to do the same thing again. So remember the asterisk from the asterisk it told us to skip one, skip two stitches. And in that third one, do the single crochet two double crochet. Okay. And then it says, comma single crochet in the last stitch so we're going to do this all the way until we get to the last stitch and in that last stitch we're going to put just a single crochet all right so let's do a couple of more skip skip the third one away we'll put a single crochet and now we go back in there and put two double crochets so that's one and then back in there again for the second double crochet all right, repeating again from the asterisk, skip two stitches, skip one, skip two, and in this third one, we're gonna put the single crochet, and then two double crochet. One, and then back in there again for two. Okay, and that's the pattern that it's making. So continue in this fashion, and make sure, even though it might be twirling on you, when it's time for you to crochet into the stitch, you keep it straight, okay? And I'll meet you at that last stitch where we're going to put that one single crochet. I will see you there. All right, so as you can see, I'm almost done with row two. And you'll see that I have three single crochets left. If you can't tell by looking at it from this point of view, one, two, three, then you can always turn it and give yourself an aerial view and give you, and then you can see the three tops, one, two, three, okay? So remember it said to put a single crochet in the last stitch. So I skip one, skip two, and normally I would put that single crochet, two double crochet in that stitch, but it's the last stitch. So I'm just gonna slice the icing off the top of the cake, that single crochet, and then just put a single crochet because it told me to end with a single crochet, okay? So now it says repeat row two until piece measures eight and a half inches, which is 21.6 centimeters, but do not fasten off. So what does that mean? Well, it means to do what you just did. So go back to row two to the instructions and it says to chain one. So we have to obviously turn our work. Okay, chain one. And I'm going to show you how I prefer to do it. <laughs> I prefer to chain one, then turn my work. All right. And now put the single crochet, two double crochet in the first stitch, which is there. So just slice the icing and put the single crochet there. And then go back in there and put two double crochet. One and two, like that. Okay. Then you're going to skip two stitches, so we can look at the tops, skip one, skip two, and that's the third one, or you can look at it from here, skip that, skip that, and that's the third one, it's the same stitch, okay? And repeat that pattern, slicing the icing off the top of the cake and putting a single crochet, and then going back in there and putting two double crochets, so one, and then back in there two okay doing it again skip one skip two and then this third one that's where I'm gonna go so I'm gonna put the single crochet in there first and then two double crochets back in that same stitch so you guys can see why this pattern is so easy right <laughs> all right repeat skip one two and then in this third one that's where I'm going to put the single crochet. And just in case you don't believe me, look at the top. Skip one, skip two, and that's where I'm going. Ah, and it's the same place. Okay. So single crochet, 
And then two double crochets in that same stitch. Okay? So you're just going to continue doing that, okay, until your dishcloth gets eight and a half inches or 21.6 centimeters long. And yeah, I will meet you there. Enjoy. All right, so as you can see, I have gotten my dishcloth to about eight and a half inches, 21.6 centimeters. And I just kept repeating a row two, okay? So now you will see in the pattern it says, do not fasten off. And I did not fasten off, okay? So now it says to put three half double crochets into each corner, okay? So this is a corner. We're gonna put three half double crochets into each corner and then just one half double crochet all the way around, all right? So you can just go right in there, just below that last single crochet that you made in the final stitch of your last row, okay? So just stick your hook in there, and there is where I wanna show you, okay? But to make a half double crochet, you yarn over, and now we're gonna stick our crochet hook in there. Yarn over, pull through to the front, and we have three loops just like with uh, a double crochet. But now when we yarn over, instead of going through two, we're gonna go through all three loops. So go through everything. That's one, yarn over, go back in there, same, same spot. Try not to get hung up on anything. That's two, and go back in there, yarn over, same spot for the third half double crochet. Now the reason that we put three in the corners is because it allows the corner one to be rounded, but also to not buckle. So you put extra stitches in the corners. And then we just will put one half double crochet around, okay? So just find a nice spot along the edge and insert your hook and then just create a half double crochet like this, okay? Alright, yarn over, I'm gonna go there. The loops, oh, lost it, yarn over. Make sure that you are putting your half double crochets close enough to one another so that it doesn't buckle on the sides either, okay? And just continue doing that and I will meet you once we get back around here. See you there. So this is how far I've gotten. This is the first corner. And I just put half double crochets all around. Then I put three half double crochets in that corner. And it brought me to the corner where I have the tail from the slip knot that I made. And so I thought that I would get back on and show you guys that whenever you have the opportunity to crochet over a tail, take it so that you don't have to weave it in later. Okay? So. These down here are the single crochets that I made in those chains. So I'm just going in that loop like that, okay? Half double crochet, so yarn over, go in the loop, put the tail on top of your crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over, go through all three loops, okay? So crochet over that tail as you're going around so that you don't have to yarn or weave it in later. Alrighty, so I think I'm gonna stay on camera for this. I'm getting that uh, sense that this is probably something that you guys wanna see all of. Not necessarily for this side, because this is a pretty easy side, you know exactly where to go into, but the other, the next side, I feel like you would benefit from seeing where I enter. So just keep going into the bottom loops. And I'm gonna speed the video up now. Almost to the corner. See why I cut out certain parts? <laughs> 
Ah. Then my yarn is splitting. This is because I'm almost at the corner. It's like, ah, oh, you're not getting off that easily. We're gonna give you a little trouble. Okay, and then this one. And then, all right, so the next one is the corner. So that's where I am going to put three half double crochets so that I make it around the corner. So just go in there for one, go back in there for two, and then back in there for three. Okay. And now this is where there's no exact place for you to go. Just kind of fill it out. Go where you think you need to go. I keep trying to make single crochets for some reason. <laughs> so I put one there. Now I think I'm going to go there for the next one. All right. Now I think I'm going to go there for the next one. And just kind of make that decision. If I go here, that's too far, so I'm going to go in there. That's how I decide where I should go. Okay. Then you just got to get in there and do it. My tension tends to be tight when I crochet, so sometimes it's hard to get into certain areas, but uh, you know, you make it work. And if you mess up, you just start it over again. T pull it out and redo it. That was the way my grandmother taught me. Don't just uh, be okay with the mistake. Take it out and do it right. And that really is great advice because you're always, you're, you're going to be aware of that mistake and it's going to bug you. So you might as well just fix it as soon as you make it. And then you will have a a quiet mind. <laughs> it won't be nagging you after your project is complete. Okay. So just continuing to put half double crochets all around this, making sure that they are close enough together so that it's not buckling up anywhere. All right, we're approaching whew, our third corner. All right, so this will be the corner stitch there. So I'm gonna put three half double crochets in there. So one back in there, same stitch for two, back in there, same stitch for three. And now you see I've gone around Okay, and then this will be another easy side because you have the tops of the actual stitches that you can go into. So you see that's the top of that one, so that's where you'll put your half double crochet. That's the top of that stitch, that's where you'll put your half double crochet. That's the top of the next stitch, half double crochet, and so on. Okay, now I'm going to meet you at the end of this round and notice they're called rounds in the pattern because now you're going around right before when we were doing this part of it they were called rows but now that we're going around this it's called around all right i will see you here all right so going back to the instructions it says half double crochet around working three half double crochet in each corner stitch slip stitch the first half double crochet to join so i have one more stitch to put a half double crochet into and now I am completely back around this stitch right here is the first half double crochet that I made in the corner so now I'm going to slip stitch into it so I'm just going to go into the top of the stitch yarn over and pull all the way through like that okay now, round two, it says with CC. Remember, CC stands for contrasting color. So with the contrasting color, work in the back bump of each of the half double crochets from previous round and half double crochet around, okay? Once again, working three half double crochet in each corner stitch and then slip stitch 
to first half double crochet to join okay so with contrasting color working in back bump so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out I'm gonna undo that slip stitch all right I'm gonna still insert my crochet hook in there like that but now I'm gonna bring in the new color so you're just gonna hook it on like this pull and slip stitch with the new color so that that first loop there is with the new color and then you're gonna pull on the red the MC the main color like that all right all right so now it says to work in the back bumps so let's just chain one to secure this yarn okay all right that was the first half double crochet of that corner all right so in this next one it's the corner stitch so we're gonna put ha three half double crochets in there so yarn over and we're only gonna go in the back bump so right here that's the top of the stitch right that right there's the front bump that's the back bump back there so we're not gonna go into the entire stitch like that we're going to go in that back bump like that okay but because we're making a half double crochet we have to yarn over first and now go into the back bump yarn over pull through three loops yarn over go through everything and remember we have to put three of them in there since it's the corner stitch three half double crochets okay now we're just gonna continue on like normal working into the back bumps of each of the half double crochets in the round below <laughs> okay so this is the next stitch yarn over but go in the back bump like that okay next stitch back bump though next stitch back bump and so on okay so you'll continue on around in this manner making sure you put three half double crochets into each corner stitch but always working in the back bump I will meet you once we get back there all right so we have one more stitch to put our half double crochet into and sorry back bump almost forgot <laughs> all right and now it told us to slip stitch into the first stitch okay so I'm gonna insert my hook into the top of the stitch the top right the whole stitch right and now I am going to because it says for round three with MC so with the main color that red working in back bump of half double crochet from previous round single crochet around working three single crochet in each corner stitch then slip stitch to first single crochet to join okay so this round round three will be similar to the round we just completed except we're going back to the red and also we'll be making single crochets this time now your red yarn or whatever color you're using should still be connected we didn't cut it remember so now that we're at this point we'll yarn over and pull slip stitch so pull it all the way through like that now we're gonna pull on this purple so that, that loop disappears gonna put it out of the way we're not gonna cut it all right and now we're gonna chain one okay so these are the three half double crochets in the previous corner so what we're gonna do we've chained one we're gonna go in the back bump of that first one and put a single crochet now technically we're in the center we're in the center stitch that center half double crochet which is the corner stitch so we're gonna put three single crochets in the back bump so one back in there two back in that same stitch for three and now the next stitch just one single crochet in the back bump okay so back bump single crochet next stitch back bump single crochet okay 
And you're going to continue in that fashion all the way around. And each corner, in each corner, that center half double crochet is the corner stitch. And so that's where you're going to put your three single crochets. Continue in this fashion and I will meet you once we get back here. See you there. All right, you guys, so we're almost done. So working with the red, got one more stitch. Work in the back bump, put a single crochet like that. Okay. And now I have to slip stitch to the previous single crochet. So I go into the top of the stitch. All right. And now we're going to go back to our contrasting color, the purple. So for round four, it says with contrasting color, reverse single crochet in each stitch around. So let me stop there. So I'm going to pick up the purple now yarn over and pull through and then I'm going to tug on the red so that, that loop disappears All right now I am going to chain one okay so it says with contrasting color reverse single crochet in each stitch around working and then in parentheses reverse single crochet chain one then reverse single crochet so those three things are the things that we're going to do in each corner stitch right now because we're going to reverse crochet we're going to go in this direction so we won't do that yet okay so let's first get to the reverse single crochet so we slip stitch this is the next stitch right there so and we're just making it a single crochet so we're going to go into the top of the stitch like that see there's the top now yarn over, pull through to the front, try not to split my yarn, okay, and I still split it anyway, alright, let's do it again, so pull it out, alright, so you rotate your crochet hook, go into the top of the stitch, alright, now yarn over, pull through to the front. And you should have two loops like that okay and then yarn over and go through two okay so let me do it again here's the next stitch I rotate my hook and I go into the stitch like that going through the top of the stitch okay now I yarn over pull it through to the front and I have two loops, even though it looks like it's one because they're really tight because I'm going in the reverse direction, but two loops. Now I yarn over and go through two, okay? So I'm going to continue doing this all the way around. And I'm going to meet you once I get to my first corner so I can show you that reverse single crochet, chain one, reverse single crochet, okay? It's just another way to make sure that you successfully get around the corner without it buckling on you all right I will see you there all right so now we have arrived at the three single crochets that we put in the previous corner okay so for this first one it's just a regular reverse single crochet like that okay but that center one remember the center one is always the one that we put either three stitches in or do three different things in okay so in this case we're gonna go in it so go into that center stitch and reverse single crochet now we're gonna chain one okay and now we're gonna go back in there and reverse single crochet again like that and now we're gonna move on to the next stitch so just in there reverse single crochet okay a lot of people have a hard time with the reverse single crochet. They overthink it. But basically you're just going the stitch that's behind you. So N. Do it again. So N like that. And then yarn over, pull through to the front, and then yarn over, go through two. Okay? So I'm not even really thinking about it. I'm just going to the top, yarn over, pull through to the front, two loops. Top of the stitch, two loops. See? In, yarn over, two loops. In, okay, going back. 
going back, yarning over, going back, yarning over, pulling to the front, going back, yarning over. Now I'm overthinking it. <laughs> going back, yarning over, and then you don't even have to separate them. Just, you know, there are two loops there, yarn over and go through two. Going back, yarning over, pulling it through to the front. Two loops are there, go through them. Going back, yarn over, okay. So that's all it is. You just go back in there, grab the yarn, hook it on, pull it to the front, and go through two. And it makes this really nice border, especially for a dishcloth you're going to be washing dishes with. Um, yeah, so just continue on this way. And don't forget for each corner stitch that you get to from here on out to do the reverse single crochet, chain one, and then go back in there with another reverse single crochet before you move on to the next stitch, okay? I will meet you once we get back around, let's see, here, <laughs> okay? Because this is where we started with the reverse single crochet, so I'll meet you there. Okay, we're almost where we started, back to where we started. So we're in the corner now, almost where we put our three consecutive single crochets. So I'm gonna go into the first one, which is not the center one. Make my reverse single crochet. And now I'm gonna go into the center one. And remember, whenever you go into the center one, you have to do three things. You make first the reverse single crochet, then you chain one, then you go back in there and make another reverse single crochet. And now we can proceed to the next one to make our reverse single crochet. All right, we have one more there. All right, and now it says to slip stitch into the first reverse single crochet. So we will just kind of take it back, go in there as if though you are about to make a uh, reverse single crochet, yarn over and pull all the way through. Okay, now we can chain one and cut our yarn. and fasten off like that. Now this red is still attached and because it's close enough to the purple I'm gonna tie a knot between these two. First I'm gonna cut the red. Alright now I'm gonna tie a knot between these two, a couple of knots. So one and then two. And now I'm gonna take my darning weaving tapestry needle and weave in these tails, okay? So. All right, so I wanna take the purple one through some purple stitches just so that it blends in, going in one direction like that. And then going back through a slightly different path in the other direction so that knots are created. Okay. And now I'm going to cut that down. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing with this red. And I don't remember where this. Oh, this is when I first started the purple. Um, that was the tail. So I'm going to weave in these two and then I will meet you at the end. All right guys, so this is the finished product. It's a beautiful, beautiful dishcloth. In my opinion, it is too nice to be a dishcloth. <laughs> but no, really excellent job with this pattern. It's absolutely beautiful. Now I know the instructions talk about blocking. We're not gonna get into that in today's video, but I just wanted to show you um, how to kind of go through a pattern and read it and understand what it says. I don't know if you guys know, but a lot of times when you get yarn, they will have patterns on the inside and they're, they're patterns in here um, to make, you know, different things, okay? So a lot of times when you buy yarn, check the inside out. I, I know you crocheters with experience already know this, but this is for the beginners. They will have things that you can actually make with their yarn okay so yeah after making this 
you should be able to open these up if you use sugar and cream and if um, if there are links on Amazon I'll leave them in the description box uh, but yeah you should be able to make you know go through these patterns and crochet a few things on your own okay that's how you grow that's how you enhance your skill level you you work at it okay um, and as you saw as we were going through the pattern there are things that weren't said in the pattern that if you've been crocheting for a while you just automatically know for example you know that before you chain out 41 you gotta make that slip knot things like that um, you know that when you're changing yarn colors usually you chain one to secure it before you start the instructions you know things like that uh, but don't worry about that those things will come with time okay all right guys that is it for this video but you know I will see you in the next one in the meantime happy crocheting mm -hmm.